Hey Scouts, Mr. Moser here again. I want to read to you one of my favorite books. It's been one of my favorites since I was a little kid, um, ever since I heard it growing up. And it is Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Um, some of you have heard this book before. I would venture to say a lot of you have. Um, but I want to focus on the lesson at the end of the story. So as we read through this, I want you to think, is there a lesson we can learn from this story? And this is by Judith Viorst. I went to sleep with gum in my mouth, and now there's gum in my hair. And when I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard. And by mistake, I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running. And I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At breakfast, Anthony found a Corvette Stingray car kit in his breakfast cereal box, and Nick found a junior undercover agent code ring in his breakfast cereal box. But in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was breakfast cereal. I think I'll move to Australia. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window, too. I said I was being scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said, if I don't get a seat by the window, I'm going to be carsick. No one even answered. I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At school, Mrs. Dickens liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of an invisible castle. At singing time, she said I sang too loud. At counting time, she said I left out 16. Who needs 16? I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Look at this picture of the um, invisible castle. It's a blank piece of paper. Guess that's because it's invisible, right? I could tell because Paul said I wasn't his best friend anymore. He said that Philip Parker was his best friend and that Albert Moyo was his next best friend and that I was only his third best friend. Hope you sit on a tack, I said to Paul. I hope the next time you get a double-decker strawberry ice cream cone, the ice cream part falls off the cone part and lands in Australia. He really likes Australia for some reason. There, are two, there were two cupcakes in Philip Parker's lunch bag, and Albert got a Hershey bar with almonds, and Paul's mother gave him a piece of jelly roll that had little coconut sprinkles on the top. Guess whose mother forgot to put in dessert? It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. <clears throat> That's what it was, because after school, my mom took us all to the dentist, and Dr. Fields found a cavity just in me. Come back next week and I'll fix it, said Dr. Fields. Next week, I said, I'm going to Australia. On the way downstairs, the elevator door closed on my foot, and while we were waiting for my mom to go get the car, Anthony made me fall where it was muddy. And then when I started crying because of the mud, Nick said I was a crybaby. And while I was punching Nick for saying crybaby, my mom came back with the car and scolded me for being muddy and fighting. I'm having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, I told everybody. No one even answered. Thank <laughs> you.
I wonder what he's feeling here. Just by looking at the picture and what's going on, nobody's listening to him, or he thinks nobody's listening to him. And based on this picture, I think frustrated. He's feeling very, very frustrated. That's what emotion comes across to me. So then we went to the shoe store to buy some sneakers. Anthony chose white ones with blue stripes. Nick chose red ones with white stripes. I chose blue ones with red stripes. But then the shoe man said, we're all sold out. They made me buy plain old white ones, but they can't make me wear them. When we picked up my dad at his office, he said I couldn't play with his copying machine, but I forgot. He also said to watch out for the books on his desk, and I was careful as could be, except for my elbow. He also said don't fool around with his phone, but I think I called Australia. My dad said, please don't pick him up anymore. It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. There were lima beans for dinner, and I hate lima beans. There was kissing on TV, and I hate kissing. My bath was too hot. I got soap in my eyes. My marble went down the drain, and I had to wear my railroad train pajamas. I hate my railroad train pajamas. When I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow he said I could keep, and the Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out, and I bit my tongue. The cat wants to sleep with Anthony, not with me. It has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Mom says some days are like that. even in Australia. So what lesson do you think we can learn from this book? One of the main lessons that I thought about was, you know, everybody always has a bad day at some point or another. Uh, things don't go the way you thought they were going to go, or, um, you know, bad things just happen. Um, especially now, it's very easy to get caught up with having to stay at home, not being able to see your friends at school or come to school. But you know what? Some days are just like that, and there's a brand new day, day after. And always look for the good in some of the days. You know, there were a lot of things going on that he always looked at the bad on. I wonder how that book would have changed if he would have shifted his perspective to look for the good and not always looking for the bad. Um, and sometimes that's all you need is to change your perspective for that. So I hope you enjoyed that book. I've always enjoyed that book, and um, we'll see you later on.